Well, one queen had the redemption she was asking for. Another queen finally gave the icon the status she deserved on the show versus a horrible interpretation. And the lip sync to a song I have been requesting from them. I was a tad bit underwhelmed. We must discuss what happened on episode four of All Star 6, Halftime Headliners. Cue my theme music. Listen. Hey everybody, it's your boy Matty Rands. Thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Do me a favor, hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Become a part of my Rant Pack family. I'm a little bit perturbed. I was supposed to go to the barbershop and get all of this cleaned up, uh, but my barber canceled on me at the last minute. Y'all know I'm flying out to Atlanta tomorrow, which is why the panel will be on a break this Sunday on the 11th, so there will be no panel. We'll be back on the 18th. I gotta cut my own hair and get my beard trimmed myself today to make sure I make this flight tomorrow. On top of that, I still got a whole bunch of other things to do, and we have an airtime show coming up. So if you're watching this episode, just to let you know, Maddie was doing a lot at one time, okay? Let's get to my social medias and let's get to this review, babies. Catch me at Maddie Rance on all social media pages except for Twitter, which is at the Maddie Rance. Y'all know I do podcasts on the Stereo app on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Definitely check us out. And I'm also partnered with the Airtime app on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Drag Race Everything on Tuesdays and Drag Race Trivia and Hot Topics on Thursdays with my co-host Julie under underscore noted where you can win some cash prizes. So definitely check me out on all those apps. Thanks again for tuning in. If you'd like to donate to the channel, Cash App, PayPal, or Venmo. Those links are provided in the description. Let's go ahead and get to this, babies, okay? So this is not the rusical. This was just a lip-syncing extravaganza number. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what it was with some halftime shows that we're all familiar with. The episode starts out with, of course, Trinity having a moment where they are celebrating the win still, but of course, coming into the room, seeing Silky's message of all Black Lives Matter and trans lives matter. I said, oh, come on, Silky, with the message. The queens sit down and go over the lipsticks and Akira realizes how close she was to going home. Bitch by two lipsticks. The girls who voted for her gave their reasons, of course, and then Trinity showing that she picked Silky was like, this does not break us. Cue me going to Silky's Twitter. <laughs> I was like, well? Next day happens, the queens are turned back into the workroom. Jan with the whole, I, my critiques weren't really like bottom. So I don't feel like I should have been or I actually was in the bottom. <laughs> and they're like, no, girl, you were in the bottom. And it's like, well, I mean, y'all didn't pick her lipstick, though. <laughs> Let's go ahead and skip on through to RuPaul's talking head and to RuPaul walking to the room with actually one of my favorite suits that he has worn. Queens must perform a lip sync number to Halftime Headliners because that's the name of the episode. Halftime Headliners? P people who have performed at the halftime show, which is football for those of us in the States, for the rest of y'all, that's that one where you have problems with where people don't understand nothing about kneeling and all that kind of sh I'll continue. But they must perform as these halftime headliners to RuPaul tracks because RuPaul was able to clear all of her music. Then the voices that are being used are clearly impersonations or close to vocalizations of the artists that they're representing. The queens have already chosen who they want to be for the halftime show. Ginger has chosen Fergie. Not for the basketball all-stars game, Fergie, but a halftime show, Fergie. Both were pitchy, but still. Uh, Eureka's gonna be Madonna from the halftime show. Once I realized Eureka was doing that, I said, child, it's funny that Pheromone and Eureka were on the same season and Pheromone did that Madonna outfit and then here we go with Okay. Raj O'Hare as Diana Ross. Yara Sophia as Shakira. Scarlet Envy as Katy Perry. Kylie's gonna give us drag king teas with Steven Tyler. Jan is Lady Gaga. I mean, this she walked into the workroom first day as, I never asked for a free ride. Like, I'm just saying. Akira is Prince. All right, let's see this. Pandora Box is Carol Channing. Why not? And Trinity K. Bonet finally is going to be Beyonce. Cue Bianca Del Rio. 
<laughs> the queens have picked who they wanted, some of them not realizing exactly what order they were going to be in, or maybe so, maybe for the cameras, whatever, whatever. But they have to do RuPaul songs to the vocalizations of impersonators of these artists, lip sync and dance on stage, with Jamal Sims being the choreographer. His fine self. God bless him. Jamal Sims does go through the choreography, but we only see a few of the people, I guess the ones that we need to pay attention to. I found that interesting, child. I was like, oh, you, you let us see who we need to be paying attention to, okay? The people who are going to be in the bottom, but the girls who are going to be in the top. Low key, high key, all keys. Ooh, almost all of them. Yeah, almost, now that I'm thinking about who was in the bottom and the top, almost all of them were showcased. Because one of them was in the top this week, and I don't necessarily agree, and that's not, be, not, not me being shady, but it just didn't make sense as to why one of them in particular was in the top. And there was no showcase of them this episode, like at all. Be real with you, I felt and knew Jan was going to win this episode based off of the first five minutes because Jan gave a full speech about, I have to be seen. They're going to know it's me. Chant to see. And no shade to Jan, but I, I said, bitch, if you don't win this one with this, all of this energy, I don't know what to tell you, sister. And Loki, did they do her like that on her season? I have a feeling they did. Mm. Yeah, because Lord knows we had that full moment talked about several times this episode over the Madonna rusical. I want to rule the world. Yes, y'all, y'all know it. <laughs> So I felt this was going to be a Jan episode. Highlights with the choreography were Yara Sophia somehow correcting Jamal's choreography when it came to Shakira. Trandy K. Bonet letting us know, I know all of Beyonce's choreography. So Jamal, whatever you saw, I, I got. Easy. Jan putting her best little monster forward here. And Ginger Minge, every time there is a dance challenge, the same sort of, oh, I'm going to try. I don't know. Maybe here. Ooh, but that. That's what I got mostly from the choreography. Some people are nervous over the steps that they have and are feeling some kind of way. This is gonna be my day, I'm gonna make this happen. People are getting ready for the performances. It was nice to also see Trinity, Akira, and Raja have this sisterhood moment. And Trinity explained that with her season, she really didn't develop any friendships or bonds with people. This time she was gonna make an effort to. And it was good to see all that love and the laughter go back and forth. <laughs> Akira said, child, I'm not gonna call you the trade, Trinity. I'm so sorry. And then Eureka stepping over there. Trandy's trade. <laughs> it was a cute moment from all of them. They're getting ready. Let's go ahead and get to the runway. Talk about RuPaul's outfit first. Eh? And of course, Jamal Sims being the guest judge. Thanks, Jamal, for being there. RuPaul, this dress was right. Yes, I actually like this one. If y'all didn't care for it, I get it, but whoo! I was here for the long little drape nasty back and with the short front with the gam showing in the front. Uh-huh. Now that wig was a little bit center of the home. It was a little center of the home. Not center on the head. It was center of the home. Right on top. But I did like the wig as well. I thought the makeup was good. I thought RuPaul was giving puss puss tonight. I thought RuPaul looked good. Uh, Carson was there. Michelle looked good. We talked about Jamal. We're continuing. Let's get into the halftime performances. And I want to say... I see the production budget. I see where your money is going into this season. I was appreciative, appreciative of how this production looked. It was highlight moments on different set parts of the stage. Some people got a little bit more of an open space. Some were more focused in one uh, direction. I was here for it. But I do need to be honest about a few of these performances because judging was interesting. Ginger Minj as Fergie, decent. Blown away? No. Decent. Honestly, there wasn't that much going on. I mean, for Fergie, that's normally the case unless you want to talk about them cartwheels she did on a news show or the arrangement of off pitches she had for the basketball All-Stars game. Was that the All-Stars game or was it the finals? I don't remember. I just remembered the voice. <sighs> Horrible. Ginger did her job. I thought it was decent. I was, I was a bit confused by the we need to have a critique moment with her, but... Ginger was decent, and I thought she looked good as little Fergie. Eureka O'Hara as Madonna. The painted on gap was cute. I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Look, look. We didn't get a rehearsal moment with Eureka, so I didn't know why them two high kicks and that turn boom cat moment happened because I didn't see Madonna ever doing that moment or trying to. You know, she didn't get to that part of the subculture just yet. I thought Eureka looked the part. I just did not really get a full feel of Madge. I, I just didn't. I thought it was okay. So when she was given a top spot, 
This week, I was a little confused. I, I thought out of all the rest of the performances, somebody else could have been put in that spot. A lot of other people could have been put in that spot. But Eureka was there. There was a performance that was had. It was Eureka. Raj O'Hare as Diana Ross. I mean, with Diana, you don't have to do that much. It's a little bit of all of the sort of nuances that Diana Ross does. A little moments here. Hey, everybody. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Fucking with the hair often. A little hand gesture, a shoulder forward, a little pushback. You know, I thought Raja did her job and it was a good it was a good performance as Diane. Yara Sophia Shakira. Woo, child. You know those certain groups where they have about 14 members and they go into a full dance choreo. And there's like four of them back there with no facial expressions, but are hitting every mark. That was Yara Sophia. Somebody in the K-pop group that does not get as much shine as other girls, but she's there for the check. Low key, high key. Your face was meh. Meh. What was happening here? It was, nothing was going on upstairs. The lights were off. It, it wasn't horrible, but it was definitely noticeable compared to everybody else. Scarlet Envy as Katy Perry was cute. I enjoyed the shark moment. You know, when she took off the outfit, that was Katy. I was, no no shade, Scarlet. I was surprised with the choreography. I enjoyed it. I was like, oh, mama's moving. It was very cute. That, that would be my note for Scarlet. It's cute. It was cute. Kylie Sonique Love as Steven Tyler um, from Aerosmith. I hope I got that correct. <laughs> It, the last time I heard about them, child, was that movie Armageddon, okay? That was when I was last paying attention to that man. When that rock was flying out and Bruce Willis had to stay up there, child, all that music. Don't want to close my eyes, because <laughs> I miss you, baby, and I don't want to miss up. That's it. I thought Kylie did a great job. The wind machine did its work, too. I thought Kylie did good. I was here for the performance. Very that. You know, decent. Help, you know, that was Steven. That was Steven. Hold the mic and scream at it. Very, very that. <sighs> Jan is Lady Gaga. <laughs> it was the piano part for me. I was like, yep, there, that's Gaga. Down. Jan did a good job with the choreography. I thought Jan was doing uh, a lot of work. I thought it was, it paid off. I was here for Jan's performance. I was very entertained. I said, that's, that's Gaga. <laughs> that is Gaga. Was I Gaga? No. But I thought she did really good. It would have been it would have been a good gag. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> if they had had her come in from the ceiling on wires, but maybe that's a little too much money, a little too much dollar thrown in there. Okay, I thought it was good, Jam. Now Akira. Now you know. Listen, I I think I would have taken the Prince part if if that was me. If Trinity wasn't there, I'd have done Beyonce. But I would have probably taken Prince. Akira, I saw you working hard, but. It was the translation for me that was lost. Bill Murray. There were certain Prince mannerisms that were missing. A little bit of that cool swag that I just didn't see from you. And not that you weren't trying. It just, the, I don't know, too much. It, it, it's just, it's hard to do Prince. It's kind of hard to do Prince. So I saw you trying though, baby. I, I, I gave you an A for effort. But a C for the presentation. I just was like, damn, girl, she's not giving me the prints I need. But I, you look good. I'll say that. Definitely. The outfit was right on you. The wig looked good. Pandora Box as Carol Channing. Q season two Snatch Game. <laughs> I mean, Pandora really did Carol Channing right. Like, it, it was cute for the moment. I, I loved it. Uh, shout out to all of the songs, too, because I actually like these versions of the RuPaul song from the showcase. I thought that, again, Pandora did a good job. You know, it's it's Carol Channing. Where is she going to go with this? It was good. But, bitch, in my opinion, who did the best in that Super Bowl performance? You can be mad. You can be mad. I don't care. The amount of... I don't care. Trinity K. Bonet redeemed Beyonce on Drag Race to an infinite level. Everybody's performances that they've done of Beyonce have been wiped away. That bitch went up there and did the, the Super Bowl show. Like, Jamal was giving Trinity choreography from the Super Bowl. So, <laughs> it was almost laughable. Because <laughs> it's like, Trinity has done this show minty of times locally at bars. Okay? The full concert bit like Jamal you gave her the choreography she already knew <laughs> I was like what 
it was so good. And a shout out to the backup dancers too, because y'all were cutting up as well. Like, Trinity, you gave B. You gave Beyonce. I was so happy. As a B fan, I was proud. Check my reaction on Patreon. Bitch, I was... <laughs> I was like, oh my God. She's cutting up. It was good. It was very, very good. I think she did the best in terms of the entire Super Bowl performance from all of them. I think Jan was second. But this runway, I think, really did count in reference for this win today, y'all. All right, let's get to the runway. Category is the frill of it all. Give us frills. Give us half of Rosé's looks from season 13. Up first is Ginger Minj giving us a little My Fair Lady lavender tease. Ginger, this is your best look so far on the show. Hands down, All Star 6. This is your best look so far. Your makeup was right. I'm glad you took those instructions from Jan when y'all was getting painted in the mirror because Jan says, you can make it a little bit lighter up here. A little bit lighter, sister. It was a little bit whoosh, a little bit dark. You know, a little bit raven. All right, so you didn't have to do that. And your makeup looked good and your the wig was right. Everything was good. I enjoyed this presentation. Go on, Ginger, go on. Next up is Eureka O'Hara in this uh, pastel pink uh, chapped frill number. I like the color. I don't like the chaps. I like the top portion of it. I don't like the chaps. The hat's a little hokey pokey. I don't like the chaps. How is she top three? Okay, let's, mm -mm. next, let me, let me move on. Next up is Raja O'Hara. This was pretty, this was pretty, pretty, pretty. Raja, that, that wig. That wig, sister. Oh, yes. The wig. Wig, 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 wig. Wig. Now, this does remind me a little bit of um, a Jada Essence Hall tease with that tool moment. At the same time, I like the fact that the sleeves have the ruffle. Could we have left them off? Yes, but I think it added a little extra to it just to give it a little something, something. But I do like this color on Raja. This was a beautiful look. Beautiful look. I, I love this. You know, very, I like classic drag. And this was that for me. Yara Sophia, listen, y'all, when I tell you this was the All-Stars 1 throwback with that wig. <laughs> y'all remember the outfit. That that same crisscross. I um, have these little la layered uh, hair moments. Very on brand for Yara Sophia. Very All-Stars 1. Uh, this was more of a fringe versus frill moment to me from the, from the dress. I did like the dress, you know what I'm saying? And I, you know, I like the dress, I like the hair, but I like the hair on a different outfit and I like the dress for a different runway category challenge. I may be looking at this a little too deep, but the, uh, orange is not my favorite color. However, I thought this was, a, it looked good on Yara. I just did not get assignment from this. I got a little bit more fringe than frill. For me. I think that maybe the frill part was more the hair, but I still don't see that. Yeah. Yeah. Scarlet Envy. Bitch. Scarlet, you've been giving me some of my favorite runways this season. Miss Thing. My only critique is the lips. <laughs> That's my only critique. I wish it was a different lip. I get why you did that lip. No shade to the lip. That was a little bit more of like this for me, but everything else about this, I, this is so puss. Oh my God. The hat is frill. The dress was frill. It's such, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I love this, Scarlet. This was good. I, I enjoyed this look. I was feeling the fantasy. Kylie Sonique Love, you were gorgeous. I think that there should have been one part of the frill factor taken off. Maybe the arms? Maybe, the, yeah, maybe the arms. That should have been reduced down just a tad bit. Chest was sitting up right. It was, it was good. Your makeup was done. I thought the wig was right. I just wanted one little thing taken off from the frill factor. But this was a good look. I like this, Kylie. Mm -hmm. Jan giving us the Jantasy in a Bordello look. Very her. Ooh, I like this, Jan. This was polished. The wig was right. The makeup was done. I love the color palette of this. I thought the frills were together. I love the drama with you opening it like, ooh, catch it. The hat was right. This is what took Jan over, in my opinion, for this episode. This was the last piece of the puzzle to be like, mm-hmm, put her up there. Put her up there. This was good, Jan. A little can-can. Pandora Box is next. Being frilly girl tease. Very doll. Very doll, doll, doll. Okay. Um, I wasn't expecting this from Pandora. Do I like this outfit? Yes. Do I like the wig? Yes. 
Um, I like this. Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. Is it is it like, whoa, no, it's not like a super powerful moment on the runway, but very clean. And I like it. Yes, clean and cute. Clean and cute. Two C's there. Trandy K. Bonet giving us classic pageant drag down. I love this kind of style. Yo, okay, this is my tea. I do love this dress. I love the color. The chandelier, big ass earrings. I was here for it. I was here for that good old pageant waft, a quaff to do. It is something I've seen before. So it's kind of like a little difficult for me to be like, oh, it's top tier, it's stellar. No, it's a beautiful, beautiful dress. But I wish it was something a little different from Trinity, but I did like this look. It was so polished, girl. It was polished. It was tough with some of the other frill looks that were out there. And speaking of which, Curious C. Davenport. Oh, sister, you you literally blossomed on the stage as a flower, darling. Listen, honey, it was the fascinator. It was the bodice underneath that worked out perfectly. The fact that those beautiful petals that were then dripped down almost into a cascading gown number with this. It was so beautiful. This was so pussy. Like, it's like open up top, it was right. Down, it was right. Like, mm. This is one of Akira's best looks, if not her best look. Yep, one of her best, if not her best look. Y yes. All I want to do is say yes. It's so good, Akira. It was. Puss. Puss. Now, the judges tell us that Raja O'Hara, Scarlet Envy, Pandora Box, and Kylie Sonique Love are safe. That gives us our tops and then bottoms here, which, again, it was... <laughs> It's like positive critiques from Ginger, but these are things that we need work with. And then the tops were Eureka, Trinity, and Jan, with the bottoms being Akira and Yara Sophia. Do y'all agree with the top three, or do you think someone else could have slid in there and taken somebody's spot? Same thing with the bottom two queens. Do you agree? Was it Yara Sophia and Akira who gave the worst performances? Jan is finally living her ultimate jantasy, and she is declared the winner of this week's challenge. Jan, the curse is broken. And she now has to make a decision between Akira and Yara Sophia, as well as everybody else backstage on who to send home. Now, Akira is hurt and upset, is trying their best, came out in one of the best drag numbers we've ever seen, okay, in terms of her runway. But the prince fell short, but she's fighting for her spot. Yara Sophia, I don't want to beg. I don't think I did anything wrong, but that's what they said I did wrong, and I agree with that. And and that's kind of that's kind of the end of it. And it's like, okay, Yara, you can you can talk about her and say Akira was worse than me. I think I should be here. My track record is better. Why are we doing this? You you could have said something, anything, but it felt very I, I, this sucks, and that was that. So I, I'm gonna take that moment. Like, okay, well, Kyria seems to be distraught and wants to fight to be here. And you were just like, I don't, this is stupid. I shouldn't be in the bottom. That's it? Okay, cool. Next. The girls place their votes. It seems like a majority of them are for Yara to go home. Now we get to this runway where Miss Jan has to now lip sync, okay? And she's got this red little shimmy number on. I was like, ooh, Jan about to cut up. The lip sync assassin is then revealed. Somebody who I think should have been on All Stars by now. And, and I'm not sure why they're the lip sync assassin based on their track record. It was like, what? You you sent her home. Huh? Help me out. <laughs> she she had the one and then it was bam, like you sent her home. Like, and if I remember, that was a disco song you sent her home to. All of this. All of this. Jessica Wilde is there in this really in this great red number. It's so good to see her. Hopefully she'll be on All Star 7. Just saying. And they're giving one of my favorite Britney Spears songs in the entire universe to ever come out. One that a lot of us can cut up to. I'm not even going to just say me. A lot of us can cut up to. Girls don't even do drag and drag queens. A lot of people would have cut up to this song. A lot of people. I did not get that today. Was it meh? Oh, not, not totally. Not totally. But did it deserve better? Yes. Yes, it did. That's one of the best up-tempo Britney Spears songs you could get. I'm never gonna fall for you. Ooh, ooh, fall for you, babe. Do -do 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 woman, eyes of woman, woman, bam, bam. Like, there are many moments. There are many moments. 
where you could literally cut up, drop, do a split, all of the above. The things that y'all were saying that Laganja was doing, the physicalness of it all. Here we go. See, I gave y'all some, I gave you a moment. <laughs> gave me a moment. Jan was losing brain cells on the stage for some apparent reason and, and was going into a hibernation mode. Maybe the, her programming was fucked up. I don't know what that was, Jan. Brittany, not. Not. Nope. 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 I, I was like, is she losing on purpose? What? What's going on here? I'm a lip sync assassin. I, I'm one of the best lip syncers. Out the whole. Okay, girl. That was boo. I'm going to be real with y'all. If y'all thought Jan was cutting up, no, sister. No, no, no. That was weird. I, I, I wanted her to do so much more, and I knew Jan could, so I did not understand Jan's interpretation of the song. I didn't get it. Now, Jessica Wilde, you had me in and out. In and out. <laughs> not burger. Ugh. In and out. Whataburger's king. It got to the point where you were tossing your wig so much, I just started assuming you were some other blonde person that's been on the show. It was like, oop, there go that bitch. Oop, there go that bitch. That wig was tired of you knocking it around. I'm going to tell you this right now, sister. Like, you were, you had a couple cut-up moments where you were dancing, and at the end, with that womanizer woman, that last part, well, I'm a baby, and you had to hit your mark. Okay, fire, pussy. I was like, yes, go ahead. But I was a little upset at this lip sync. Not saying it was the worst one ever. It just, uh, it, it, oh, we needed we needed two different queens in there. I'm gonna be real with you. We needed two different people. Mm -hmm. I wish Ganja and Trinity got this one. I'm glad they got Dua Lipa physical. I'm glad they got Dua Lipa. But still, if Ganja and Trinity got this one, oh this, oh, ooh, it would have went down. If Brooklyn and Raja got this, ooh, it would have went down. Jan and Jessica, my two J's. It was okay. They also cut the song like heavy. So we missed a large portion of that lip sync if they did the whole song because y'all heard it. It was like, we gonna start this whole first part up and now we're towards the end. I was like, the song's not that long. Is it that long? Like, help me. <laughs> I don't know. I was okay with it. Jessica Wilde was the winner of the lip sync. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, th even though Mama was fighting her wig on stage, giving me very Dovima Tease from uh, Drag Race España. Y'all saw the roast. Mama's wig was attacking her. <laughs> okay, that was the Ugasio curse. <laughs> Jessica Wilde won. The majority of the votes came in. And it's really... Y'all ain't shit for the storyline purposes of this drag race. Y'all were so fierce, Jessica Wilde. My best friend is here. If I ever were to die, da 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 Jessica would know everything about me and do my memoirs. Who does Jessica Wilde sit home? Oh, her best friend, Yara Sophia. <laughs> Jessica was like, that did not feel good. RuPaul, I had to send my friend home. Like, what, what is this? I'm not even on the show. And now I'm feeling some kind of way. Yara Sophia takes the, takes the loss. Thank you so much. Walks away. Fuck all of you. That's it. That's all she said to them girls. Turned around, posed, and walked away. Rika said, that's it? That's all she said? Okay, bitch. <laughs> Yara said, chop, they're mad because they knew I would have taken over. They they know what's up. They know I would have clowned them, girl. A little mad, but then again, Yara, you would have been way more upset if we had if they had sent you home uh, earlier, child, over uh, Jiggly. Because, you know, I'd have picked your lipstick. Just saying. Nine queens remain in the competition. There's still a twist that has yet to be opened up for our eyes to see, but we'll see it soon enough. What'd you think of this week's episode? Tell me in the comment section down below. Don't forget to hit that like button, share, and subscribe to the channel. If I forgot anything, I'm so sorry. This has been a crazy week, and it's going to be a crazy weekend for me. I'm literally flying to Atlanta for work. Uh, I appreciate everybody for showing your love and support and for coming back to my channel. Thanks again for being here. I will see you all on the internets. Hugs and kisses, my best love and wishes to you. Enjoy my rants. Talk to you soon.